we're gonna come for number two, Ali K. So if you've watched all three songs in the prep show to I've Gotta Save Myself, there's nothing special about it. There's only one fact. We all have to learn how to save ourselves. Now, the good news is, I like all three versions. The bad news is, it just came out at, at me in the shower. There was no, like, deep thoughts or anything in it. Like, most of my other songs, I have pretty deep thoughts. Um, some of them come from the depression that I suffer from. Uh, knowing that it's okay to not be okay is a thing. And you just kind of got to accept things as they come. You can't change everything. You can't control everything. And more importantly, you can't control people unless you physically are controlling people. Like, there's a part in there where I say I break off a person's arm and beat them down with it. Clearly, I'm beating up a zombie, but if I could actually physically break off someone's arm and beat them with it, you best believe that I will do that shit. Because I'm 50, and I can't be playing with you young whippersnappers. And since I'm a martial artist, I will always tell people the truth. If you have to fight someone, it is best to immobilize them as best as you can first. Because... Um, if your cardio is bad, you're probably going to get fucking fucked up. So I always teach people when I teach them martial arts, especially when I teach them Kung Fu or Kempo, to break at the elbow versus break at the arm. All right? Yeah, this is going to heal a little bit faster. But this, watch carefully. See how that functions? Break this. This doesn't work anymore. See how that moves? If you break this elbow, they lose function in the hand. If you break this elbow... See how all of this moves. It's all controlled at the elbow. Watch in there. There's a twitch. It might show up better over here. But all, all of these are all connected. The human body is an intricate mean. It is probably the best design ever. However, it is also the best design that you can break. And these also control the flow of blood. So if I am getting a punch thrown, and I step to the outside for Kung Fu, snap the elbow, and then pop you in the throat, pop you in the sternum. I'm going to pop you in places that I know is going to do damage. Now, here's the reality. I have to get there. This is the things they don't teach you when you follow all these people on the internet. They leave off a lot of things in the truth. Boom! That shit hurts. And if you have a glass chin, well, you might not be getting up, my friend. Now, if you have a steel jaw... You might take that hit like it ain't nothing. Which is another reason why if you're throwing a punch at me and I'm getting to the outside, I'm breaking the elbow, you might take that hit and it might not be nothing. So if I hit here, I'm going to come back. So boom, boom. I'm going to go to the face and to the sternum. Because if you can't breathe, you can't hurt me. I break your arm, you can still do damage. But am I going to be stupid enough to stand there and let that happen? There's another thing people don't understand when you're talking about martial arts. Fights don't work like they do in the movies. They don't. And anybody who tells you they do, they're lying through their teeth, or they've never been in a fight, or they've been very, very lucky, or very skillful, and have not lost. My big sister used to beat my ass all the time. But when it came to real fights, I never got my ass kicked, because I knew I could take a beating. Knowing that you can take a beating is part of the battle. If you know you're tough enough that you can take a couple of hits, then take what you can take, avoid what you can't. That's why they teach you how to block, because not everybody can take a fucking hit. And to be honest, you're not going to know if you can take a hit until you actually get hit. All right? And nobody hits the same. Nobody. Big guys don't always hit hard, and little guys don't always hit soft. Some little guys hit harder than the big guys. Some big guys hit softer than the little guys. Now, there are some big guys that hit hard as hell. And there are some little guys who can't hit you harder than a fly. But again... Skill set and experience is always going to be the most important thing as I end this video. When you stop training at the dojo, you go home and put some more time in. Because if you don't, you might get fucked up. One last thing. If you are a dojo teacher, I need you to hear me. You don't have to respect me. You should, but I need you to hear me. Because they don't do this in dojos. And if I ever opened up a dojo, this would be a requirement. You come to the dojo seven days a week. The first week of that dojo, we swapping out clothes. You're going to wear some cheap street clothes. Shit that you're not going to give a fuck about. Old clothes. Go thrifting. Because what people fail to tell you in the dojo is that 
You're never going to be attacked in your gi unless somebody's just fucking off the fucking rocker. No one comes to a dojo and tries to fight you. Because they pretty much know that no one in that dojo is going to let them leave in one piece. You are more likely to be attacked at home, on your job, or at a shopping mall. And if you don't train in regular clothing, you might get too used to the idea of how you train is how you fight. And you may forget that before you knew martial arts, you wore regular little clothes. So unless that gi is going to be like your everyday thing, like if you're like, I'm going to wear this gi and Chinese clothing all over the place, that's the only way you're possibly going to be attacked while you're wearing a wushu uniform or a karate gi or a capoeira outfit, which is basically like what I'm wearing right now. My um, Dragon Ball Z pajama type pants and a tank top. Because cap over here, there's a lot of fluent motion and you want less stiff pants. Wushu, your gi is a little less, like, different but not tight. Where Wing Chun, your, your gi is different. Your karate gi is different. Your taekwondo gi is different. But the problem is, you're only in your gi at certain parts of the day in a certain school. You're never going to get attacked at school unless it's by somebody in that school or a rival school. In real life, you're going to get attacked on wearing some shit like I'm wearing. Somebody breaks in your house, you're wearing pajamas unless you sleep naked. Alright? Somebody meets you outside in the front, you're wearing regular ass clothes. You're not wearing your gi. Unless you live at the dojo or a monastery and even they don't get attacked these days. So keep that in mind if you're going to open up a dojo. You have seven days. Out of the seven days, pick three or four where you train people in their regular clothes. And that includes the sensei, who should also be wearing regular clothes. That being said, I'm Echo from Grey Wolf. This is Kung Fu Habit number two. B, C, and U.